who's the best Joker, Heath Ledger or Joaquin Phoenix? I think everybody can agree, even people who don't like the Joker movie, Joaquin is good in it. Like he's not delivering a bad performance. But to me, I don't think, I mean, Chris, do you disagree? He's delivering a good version of what he's doing. Yes. But I dislike what he's doing, if that makes sense. I don't like the childlike thing. I find it weird when you're trying to put that in the mental illness and like, I don't know what that is meant to be. Um, and I find the dancing very weird. <laughs> I actually like um, Joaquin Phoenix' performance in Joker. Um, I feel like he does it well, but I, it's not it's not on the level of Heath Ledger's performance. Do you think no. he feels like the Joker in the movie? No, no, not for me, no. Because I, I look like at Heath Ledger's I'm, Joker and I'm like, that's the Joker. Yeah, and I, I can't even see Heath Ledger. There's, there's different... There's different incarnations of the character. So I'm fine with that incarnation of the character. But like like I was saying about the Dark Knight being the definitive Batman movie, all the characters in this are the definitive characters. Like um, Heath Ledger's Joker is like the standard, what you would think of if you was thinking the Joker. And I feel like Heath Ledger being able to like get it perfectly is mad because I remember when the casting came out, oh, Heath Ledger People was dead. were mad. It, it, was, it was ludicrous. Everyone was like, no, he can't do it. Boom. And he dove into the role so deeply. And like you're saying, when, when you see him on screen, you don't know that's Heath Ledger. That is legitimately the Joker from beginning to the end of the movie. His, and what's even crazy with that is like, his performance is so well-rounded. Like he's, comic relief at times, like he's he's funny at times, he's scary at times. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, he's disturbed. But at the same time, it's like, you kind of like the character and it's weird that you like him because he's on a madness, but it's just there. Like just him alone is is amazing. And then obviously you've got Christian Bell, um, who does a great job, Michael Caine, they're all like, the, the rest of the characters are thrown in there as well. And I feel like it's all like, it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful cast. I want to specifically speak, speak about like the nuances and the differences between the characters, how, how they've portrayed the same character. And Clarice, please jump in. I know we're not specific, specifically talking about your movie Can here. we get to Margot Robbie eventually? <laughs> we can absolutely talk about Margot Robbie, I promise. You know, She's waning. But I think, I think there's something about how Heath Ledger disappears into that role, but yet still, like that moment when he first takes off the mask and says that iconic, um, whatever doesn't kill you, only makes you stranger, stranger line. Like when I'm looking at it, I remember, I mean, I got to go see it again last year during the midpoint when the uh, lockdown was lifted for a few weeks and they were playing movies in the cinema. They played The Dark Knight in IMAX and I jumped at the opportunity to see that. And just the reveal again of seeing that face, like on that big screen, it was, and I just believe that he could exist. Like I, I see that guy and I'm just like, that is terrifying. No, that man does exist. He does exist. <laughs> Listen, there is no, <laughs> there is no denying that. Yeah, I love, just, I love every part of it. I even just his design as the character, like the, the, the face paint, but it's all cracked and you can it's see all on his through fingers. it. The scars, they're there and they're covered up by the makeup and, and he's got the green hair, but it's like half washed out. like. There's just a next level of commitment he goes to to, to get into that role. I don't um, know if people know this. I think it's pretty well known, but Heath Ledger like spent a month alone, locked in a hotel room, developing the voice and keeping notes and things like that. And it's just, yeah, the level of commitment for it. People think he was method. He wasn't. He was very much in and out of character on set. Sometimes when he was in a scene, he'd stay in character, but he'd come out of it. He's not like the Jared Leto sending rats to people thing, mm. which is ridiculous. <laughs> but Heath is like, when he's on, he's, he's on. And there's even a famous story in a documentary that somebody did about Heath Ledger, where somebody's talking, I think he was like on set with him. I don't know if he was an acting coach or whatever it was, but the scene when he comes out of the elevator to say, where is Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight? Apparently Heath was very nervous about that. He's like, oh, there's all these people here. And he was like, well, they're your audience, use them. And that's why that's, that scene feels so chaotic where the camera's mm. following him because he's just going around grabbing things and pointing the gun at people. He's just allowed to play. Yeah, and it's, so, it's just some of the, just the weird oddball stuff he does is what gets me is like, um, when the guy goes to take off Batman's mask and gets electrocuted and he jumps on top of him and he goes, <laughs> like stuff like that. I'm just like, 
It's it's just a it's a it's a whole other level. Like I just don't think we'll ever get another Joker yeah. that is up there. Like, and this is why I say like the Dark Knight is the definitive Batman movie. Like those characters are, are it. I tell you what though, um, joking, uh, joking Phoenix spent a whole summer way a just an apple a day mm. to get that physical appearance, and that physical you know appearance is terrifying. It's, yeah. It's so uncomfortable, and this uh, this is what this movie does. It just literally makes you uncomfortable. But speaking of that scene that you just mentioned about when the guy gets um, tasered and he does that whole blah, 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 <laughs> like joke, uh, and this is where I find there is there are traces that are common between that Joker and 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 this Joker is that the way they switch up because he'll, he'll you know he goes. Blah, and he starts kicking the guy and then he goes back to serious and this one he like there's there's a scene where he gets fired for for having the gun and he, he walks down the corridor <laughs> and he goes ah oh, i forgot to 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 um punch, punch, out. punch out. out and he comes back and he did that in real life and everybody just stood there like it wasn't part of the script and he was just like what i think that the contrasts all throughout like i love the bit on, yeah, I do. I do love the bit in Joker when somebody tells a joke about the um, the little person in the scene, and Joker laughs, and then as soon as he turns the corner, he just switches him off. Yeah. It's, it's, but then, can I add that scene ends with him uh, going past that sign saying "Don't forget to smile," and then he crosses out the "forget to," so it says yeah. "Don't smile," which yeah. I would argue is not the greatest filmmaking choice. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry to bring the conversation down. Just why is, wanted why to point is that? that out. Why is that? Because I feel like your film is Joker. It's about a comedian. Like we get, we don't have to have him physically like cross it out. I think yeah. <laughs> like, I think there's, get it. there's just quite a lot of um, very on the nose imagery throughout the whole thing. When but, I I think it would have benefited from being a bit more abstract and a bit a bit more subtle, a bit gentler with some of the things. Yeah, that doing. it's just the point where it's like it's just hammering we, you over the we head. We understand. We understand. It's the irony that he's a clown and he's sad. <laughs> like I got that from fifty from the opening like, shot. 30 seconds in, I was like, I understand. You don't need to make him cross out the sign. I, th I think <laughs> it just goes with with what he's going through. And the, there's one particular scene where he's talking, um, where he's at his session. And, he, you know, he tells her, oh, I've turned, I've turned my, my journal into, into a comic book where I have observations and, and funny stuff. So he's now converting the way he sees the world. So obviously when he... He's going through a bad patch and he sees that. It's like, well, no, like that's an observation. And he just automatically annotated that. So, and that goes back to his notebook, you know? So I think there's a consistency there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. There's, there's an argument for that. I guess I, I just don't, I don't, I don't like the whole concept of that person. And, 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 and it goes back to, I think you just, it, we're all seeing the same thing, but with just different eyes. Hey, you know what? If you like that, there's there's like a whole load more of them. There's multiple episodes, but this one is also available right now. The full episode is available on Prime Video UK's YouTube channel. Also on every podcast provider that you can think of. Is it on every podcast provider? Is it on Spotify? Yeah. Nice.